Hello everyone, this is Vitality Development and welcome back to another tutorial. So if you remember about the easy enemy movement tutorial, although technically it wasn't really... Well yes, it was easy, but it's also very basic. This is now going to be part two. In this part, I'm going to show you how to do enemy movement uh, with collision in a way because I showed you with an active object that if we had uh, eight directions on it and we had another uh, active object and we made this like a wall at the moment we are able to actually run the frame and we're able to actually move the player with our arrow keys as you can see we're able to move the uh, player with our arrow keys and also of course if we do uh, this colliding against the wall we make him stop of course there we go we are making him stop so it's really 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 difficult to get him past there but of course if we do let's say always uh position the x position of the active plus one then of course he's going to keep on going and of course if we like uh, do that if we move him then he can go through the wall but i have found out a way where if even if you move your player you can't actually move your player and this is how you do it so if we do for example a uh, keyboard re repeat while pressing Repeat while key is pressed, <laughs> and we do right, and we do the same for the other keys. So left, down, and up. What we can do is, whilst these are being pressed, we can set the position of our character, the X coordinate of our character, to um, X coordinate. And do that for left arrow, and for down arrow and up arrow, we do the Y position instead. So when we repeat, uh, when when we hold down the right key, we set the X position of our active to X of that active and do the same. And then the Y position of the active when we press down and up. And now what that's going to do is, watch, our fingers moving. And if I do the arrow keys, I should not be able to move. Okay, okay, so I have figured out the issue. Now, well, um, because I'm pressing down, actually, you know what? I'm going to show you something. So, <clears throat> um, let's turn on the keyboard. Wait, that's the mouse. What? <laughs> this is, okay, you know what? Hold on a minute. Okay, so now we have the keyboard um, highlighted right here. I can now show you. If I uh, do the arrow keys, you can actually see the arrow keys being... um used so now if we actually run the frame our active is moving and it's colliding but i'm literally using the arrow keys and i can't move the player at all so that is that's technically how you create an enemy movement now for example if we wanted to have many enemies you could just click on this and uh where is it is this it paint mode wait hang on a minute Aha! So, this is kind of like a tiling thing with 2D sprites in a way. So, what I've done is, uh, if you already knew about this, and cool, if you didn't, uh, paint mode is where you highlight like an object or this, yeah, and you can literally just do this. You literally paint the entire thing just by holding it down. But we don't want to do that, so <laughs> what we're going to do is create a few more. So one, two, three. So now, if we come out of it, and they're all going to move, and we can't move any of them at all. But, for example, if you wanted to have a different active, and uh, let's just put it as pink, I don't know why, and we also have that as eight directions, Make sure that you put directions here, click on it, and put it to this over here to reset it, and do the same to initial direction over here as well. So now, 
directions and initial direction are completely blank on eight directions. So now, uh, when we do always set X position to that, we can bring that over to the other active and we can also do right arrow pressed and the X position over here as well. So now it's now moving the pink one and I can't if I okay somehow I moved it. What? You know what? I think I actually forgot to do collision between. Actually, no way. Hang on. I need to do collision between this and then stop that. So what? What we're doing is, we are making the pink thing collide with the wall to make the pink thing stop. So let's just see this happening now. So now it's happening. Don't know why it's moving down when I press the down key. Okie dokie, I'm back now, and I think I've made a ground-breaking discovery, maybe. <laughs> so, you know what? Let's just completely get rid of all of this. Um, if you if you guys need to, like, I don't know, uh, access this, yeah, then I'll have it in the description link thing. But I just want to test this out. So at the moment, none of the objects are going to move, right? Okay, cool. And all of the objects have eight directions on it. Yes, they do. So now, if we do always uh, move the, well, what's I called, um, actives, move the actives along one X. So they're currently moving along one X. Wait, hang on. I can't even move them. Hang on a moment. So if I put these on for the pink one. Wait, what? B b okay. And now put that one for the initial direction. Wait, I can't even go left. I can only go up and... This is not making any sense. Click team, what are you doing? Holy moly. Um, I don't even know what is happening at the moment. <laughs> so I can move both of them with the arrow keys, but I can only move one of them with the up arrow keys. So the left and right arrow keys moves all of them. And I've got this one with... <laughs> I was really hoping that this video would be like simple to make, but this just makes it a whole lot harder. And Quick Team Fusion is not making it easy for me to give you this tutorial, so I apologize, everyone. Okay, guys, so I have made probably another groundbreaking discovery with Click Team, but um, I've just brought in this new active, made it eight directions, and since I've taken taken away the directions and initial direction down there, I can no longer move the object. So, if I put the directions back on, I can move the object? Yeah! So, okay. So then I take away the directions, and I can no longer move the object. How is it that in the other part, it did the it didn't let me do this. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, like, Click Team Fusion doesn't make sense most of the time. This is why I use Unity now. Unity makes a little bit more sense sometimes, more so than Click Team. So now, what we're gonna do is, how long is this? 15 minutes. Holy crap, I really, really am so sorry about how this tutorial is going on for longer, but what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to make random movement with this enemy object. But first of all, let's just do a collision against wall and make him stop, of course. And now, uh, let's go over into the active object and create alterable values. The first one is going to be left. No. Uh, it's going to be called RND, and then it's going to be called, I think, uh, up, down, left, right. 
the reason why we're doing R and D is um it's called random number. Well, it's called random. It's not called random number anything. It's just called random R and D. And the up, down, left, right is just to make him go in a direction. So we're gonna do every uh I don't know two seconds. We are gonna set the value of active of the uh, R&D to random f 5 because 1, 2, 3, 4 will be left, right, up, down. So let's just do the active alterable values compared to alterable value and let's do up. No wait, hang on, hang on. Let's do R&D is equal to 1 and then uh, copy and paste that, and then do 2, 3, and then 4, and then if it's equal to any of them, we're going to set the alterable value of up to 1, yep, so then that's going to set the alterable value of down to 0, and then left to zero, right to zero, and so on and so forth. So I'll be back. So here we go. When the random value is equal to one, then we set the up to one and the rest to zero. When R and D is equal to two, we set down to one, rest to zero. R and D three, left to one, right, the, the rest to zero, and four, right to one. So now when the alterable values of uh, up is equal to one and we're going to do copy and paste so that we change it to down left and right. So now when it's up equals to one we can move the active object uh, and set the y position of the active object to the y coordinate minus one and the reason why we're doing minus one is because in in the click team layout thing if you if you go up it's minus if you go down it's plus so it's not like uh normal things where if you go up it's plus and you go down it's minus in click team when you go up, it's minus, and <clears throat> well, you get the gist of it. So now, with the down, we can just drag this, and then do it as plus one. And with left and right, we've got to do the x coordinate now. So here we go. When up is equal to one, then we go up. When down is equal to one, we go down. When left is equal to one, we go left. And when right is equal to one, we go right. So, let's see how this all works out, shall we? So he's currently not moving, and we can't move him at all. There we go. He is currently moving a lot, and he's out of frame, damn it. To make sure that he does not leave the frame, we can do active, um, collision, no, not collision, position, and test position of active, is it? Yes. Let's just make sure that he does not leave the frame area. So leave the frame area, we're gonna basically stop him. So let's see how this goes. Hey, there we go. He is now colliding against the wall. And is he gonna stop? Oh, 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 where is he gonna go? How does he get out of the wall though? Okie dokie, I finally have made it work everyone. So what I've done is because he's now colliding against the sort of outside wall this thing down here does not work but what i've done is i've actually made a sort of border thing now if you, uh, now if say for example you want to keep your enemy in the frame and you don't want them to leave ever what you have to do is you have to make sure that these walls uh follow the frame there we or don't follow yes no don't follow the frame because if it follows the frame, they will come out of the frame when the scrolling happens. So make sure that they do not follow the frame. And that's basically how you do 
enemy movement. Now, I think, I think, I think, I think, can you actually make sure that um, if I do uh, user clicks or something that can change the movement or something? Next movement. Wait, select movement. Move. You c wait, hang on. You can have multiple move. Wait, hang on. So, movement. Okay, so you can plus. Okay. So, yes, movement one. Movement one can be like, I don't know, bouncing ball or something and make that 10. So, if we do that, can we use the clicks? So then, movement, multiple movements, select movement, movement one. So, okay, that goes to movement one now. So then, if, say, uh, actually, we can also do always. No, yes, always. Uh, make the active looking direction of. Wait, well, I need to actually put an active in where my mouse is. Okay, let's just see if this actually works. So if I click. Okay, so we are. Ooh. Oh, oh, and then we stuck. Oh, dang it. Anyway, guys, I'm actually going to save this project and I'm going to call it like easy enemy movement. But um, all I'm going to say is uh, I apologize that this video was very, very long. I did not expect it to actually be this long. I was just trying to figure out the enemy movement. I'm probably just going to cut most of it out. I don't even know. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If any of this actually did help you out, then I'm I'm glad it has. And if this video didn't help you out, then please do talk to me in the comments because I will try my best to reply all the time. But apart from everyone, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys soon. Goodbye, everyone.